Hi, welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I will show you a horror, thriller film from 2020, titled The Super Deep. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1984, epidemiologist Anna Fedorova loses her research associate when the testing of a vaccine goes wrong. Feeling guilty for having authorized testing on humans without preliminary or animal testing first, Anna wants to shut down the project, but Colonel Yuri Morozov stops her. Shutting down the project wouldn't help her feel any better, and the soldiers in Africa need her. If she gives up now, her friend would have died for nothing. Months later, Anna is spending New Year's Eve with family and friends who congratulate her for having come up with the vaccine so fast. Their dinner is interrupted by a phone call from Morozov, who needs Anna for a special mission. There's been an incident at the Kola Super Deep borehole, some noises have been heard and people disappeared, so the station has been shut down and will be sealed in 24 hours. The head of research has been denounced for hiding data on a supposedly unknown disease, and that's why they need Anna. After Morris promises her full credit for the discovery and the position of head of the Military Biological Defense Institute, Anna accepts and gets ready to leave. In the morning, Anna arrives at the station together with Morozov and a group of soldiers led by Major Sergei Mikiev and his right-hand Igorov. As soon as they land though, they already encounter their first problem. A scientist has escaped the station with a grenade in hand that he detonates as soon as he reaches the helicopter. The group hears a buzzing in their ears for a few seconds, but luckily they're all okay. Anna wastes no time and goes to check the scientist's body to gather a sample, while Sergi teases her for her accent, trying to guess where it's from. The sample however, turns to dust as soon as Anna puts the lid on the test tube, and she can't help noticing a weird red glow on the body as well. One of the station's guards explains that the scientist went crazy as soon as he reached the surface, and he was so strong not even three soldiers could stop him. The rest of the staff is being evacuated now, so Anna goes to take samples from them before they leave. One of the men tells her everyone's dead down there, and the disease is a lie, so she should run back to her family. All the miners seem fine, but the one with the scar saw something that has scared him, so Anna does think it may be more than a disease. Afterward, Anna, Morozov, and the squad of soldiers enter the station with head scientist Pyotr Kuznetsov and Dr. Dmitry Grigoriev. Anna tries to ask some questions about this mysterious infection, but Grigoriev refuses to give her details because he thinks they're all here with an ulterior motive. He'll only help them enough so that they can get their sample and guarantee a safe evacuation for all the survivors, no more. Anna wants to know why he even locked up the survivors in the first place, but Grigoriev doesn't answer that either. The group makes it to the elevator, where Grigoriev has to be careful when imputing the access code, because getting it wrong three times makes the elevator crash as a security measure. Thankfully he gets it right on the third try, so the party begins descending into the deepest man-made hole in the world. When they reach their floor though, the brakes don't respond, so Grigoriev depressurizes the elevator and puts on an oxygen mask while the rest of the group passes out. When they wake up a few moments later, Grigoriev has left with the elevator key. It seems they've made it to the facility's resort, which is the area the staff lives in most of the time. The main research level is even lower, and there is a second elevator that can take them there, but they can't activate it without the key. This area used to be crowded at all times, but now, they only find only two remaining staff members. Engineer Nikolay and Dr. Kira Vitalivna, who were left behind during the initial evacuation. Kira takes them to the lab so Anna can take samples from both and look at them in the microscope, confirming neither of them is infected. It seems Grigory had it all planned, and they were left in this area on purpose because it's clean from any possible signs of the disease, so they'll need to look for a proper source elsewhere. Speaking of Grigory, he reveals himself to Anna to ask her to take the team back to the surface through the shafts and save themselves while they can because people should always be the priority. Anna calls the soldiers to capture him, but before they can reach him, Grigory escapes using the elevator, only leaving a bloodstain on the door behind. They decide to send a group of soldiers led by Igorov into the shaft, which they need to force open, because Grigoriev had sealed it up. While the soldiers put on protective suits to withstand the incredibly high temperatures of the lower levels, the shaft doors suddenly open on their own, revealing lab assistant Olga Krilova looking rather sick after walking through the heat to reach them. The soldiers rescue her and take her to the lab, then go down the shaft. Before starting the checkup, Anna asks Olga some questions, but she remembers nothing of what happened down there, she's also burning with fever, even though she says she's cold. When Anna takes off her gown, she makes a disturbing discovery on Olga's back, it's covered with disgusting mold-like growths, which Olga claims don't hurt, not even when Anna makes a cut to take a sample. 
While the soldiers report having found some kind of life in the lower level, Anna puts the sample under the microscope and discovers it's a cellular parasite, some highly virulent form of mold. Fungi and mold are the least studied forms of life, and this one is unknown, so that's enough for Morozov to end this operation and start heading back. Nikolay begins working on the elevator's system to force it to come back, which will take over an hour. Sergi tries to contact his team again, but they seem to be in trouble at the sight of something dangerous and don't answer their walkie-talkies anymore. At that moment, Grigory contacts them through the speakers and tells them he had hoped they would escape through the shafts, so now they leave him no choice. Grigory proceeds to set off a bomb to seal them all within the facility as he asks for forgiveness, and Anna is reminded of her own guilt related to the vaccine when the area starts shaking around her because of the explosion. In the lab, Olga's body begins to glow, and she slowly loses control, blowing up the glass and attacking Kira. Meanwhile, Nikolay discovers that the explosion damaged the pressure pump and will cause the facility to collapse within an hour. He wants to find a way to get out and shows no care for the soldiers trapped in the lower levels, earning him a punch from Sergi. However, Morozov agrees that going back for those soldiers is too dangerous, so they'll be leaving through the shafts. Sergi goes with Anna to the lab to retrieve Olga and they find a very unpleasant surprise. The entire place is covered with mold and Olga is half melted to the floor but still alive. On the other side of the door, Morozov doesn't care that Anna is surrounded by contamination without protection and orders her to take samples anyway. When she and Sergi come closer though, Olga begins releasing a cloud of spores, so Sergi runs out of the room and Anna steps back and grabs a mask to avoid breathing them in. That's how she comes across Kira, who has been infected and mutated like Olga, and she dies when her bones suddenly poke out. Anna tries to leave the room and has another guilt-associated hallucination when she slips, but this allows her to find a fire extinguisher. She uses it to clean the air around her so she can open the door without the mold escaping, and after closing it again, she asks Nikolay to use the extinguisher on her body to disinfect her. Afterward, Anna goes to check on Sergi, but it's too late, he's already infected and has lost his sight. When she tells everyone about Kira, Pieter explains that it isn't supernatural, this mysterious mold is like the fungus that takes over an ant and makes it go back to its nest so it can release its spores and infect everyone else. Anna asks Morozov to speak in private so she can tell him about her discovery. The mold dies when exposed to cold and it's been using human bodies to survive in the upper area's permafrost. She wants to stay with Sergi to search for the last survivors, while Morozov goes back to the surface and calls a rescue team, but this isn't even an option, the facility will be shut down in five hours, there's nobody coming. Morozov orders everyone to suit up so they can leave, but at that moment, they receive a message from Igorov asking them not to open the door, even if it's for them. After a long argument, Pieter reminds them this is their only chance at survival, so may as well open the door anyway. They send three soldiers down the shaft to investigate first, but two quickly come back after shooting at something big that tried to attack them, yet they couldn't identify. The third soldier also comes back without an arm, and he ends things with a knife right before the group closes the door. Whatever is in the shaft now knows they are there, so it begins slamming the door to try to get out. The group runs away and makes it to the back of the area to see the elevator finally arriving. Nikolay begins working on a way to drop it down, hoping the emergency brakes will hold. Sergi's body starts glowing, and he knows he doesn't have much time left, so he decides to stay behind with his men to try to stop the mysterious entity, which has finally broken down the doors. Anna, Nikolay, Pieter, and Morozov get in the elevator and hold tight as it begins falling down. The pressure makes it hard for Nikolay to reach the brakes lever, so Anna has to leave her seat and do it herself. Fortunately, she pulls it just in time, and the elevator safely lands on the lowest lever, which is colder than they expected. All the rooms are covered with frost, and a recording from a scientist tells them he also figured out the mold is weak to the cold, and the ice age must have kept it underground all these years. Sooner or later though, it'll figure out that the permafrost has an end, and it could escape, this thing has already learned to melt bodies together for warmth and power. This is the reason why the group doesn't find any survivors, they're stuck on the wall in a giant melted pile of mold that has died of cold. Morozov takes the last suit and enters the 200 degrees environment to try to recover the elevator key from Grigoriev. While they wait for him, Anna asks Nikolay and Pieter not to say anything about this mold when they return to the surface because it would bring more people to investigate, putting humanity in danger. 
Nikolay accepts, but Pieter is hesitant, because he had been hoping to make a big discovery that put him on the map. When Morozov takes too long to come back, Anna decides to enter the hot area next without any protection, since in theory, the human body can survive there for a few minutes. As blisters begin appearing on her body, Anna finds Morozov dead on the floor, because the suit had been sabotaged by Grigoriev. At least he has the elevator key in his hand, so after seeing the mold glowing on the walls, Anna takes the key and runs back inside. Nikolay tries to help her, but Pieter suddenly shoots his leg and demands to be given the elevator key so he can go out and get the fame he deserves for this discovery. They give him the key and Pieter takes the second elevator with both of them, keeping them at gunpoint. When they return to the resort level, they go to the first elevator corridor to investigate, and Pieter tries to keep Anna behind so he can get into the elevator alone. However, he's suddenly attacked by the strange entity from the shaft, it's a disgusting creature made of the infected staff members that have been melted into one organism. They're still alive and screaming, while the creature kills Pieter. Anna runs away and hides in the mess hall, but the creature comes after her, so she grabs a knife and enters the freezer. There she gets an idea, she takes off most of her clothes and tosses a bucket of freezing water on her body, so her temperature is too cold for the mold to infect her. Then she comes out and crawls under the creature to take the elevator key from Pieter, who has also been absorbed. Locking the doors behind her, Anna rushes out of the mess hall and finds Nikolay, so they can escape together. However, the creature finds them by breaking through the wall, so the pair runs away until they reach the elevator and manage to push the doors closed right as the creature tries to reach inside. The elevator starts going up, but Nikolay and Anna have one last surprise waiting for them, Sergi is also there with them, melting into the floor and begging them to do something as he coughs out spores. Anna stops the elevator because she doesn't want to take the mold outside, but Nikolay doesn't want to die here and activates it again. The two of them begin fighting over control of the elevator, and when Nikolay is about to kill Anna, Sergi forces his body to do one last effort, he raises his arm and uses the exposed bone to kill Nikolay first. To show her gratitude, Anna tells Sergi that she's from Yugoslavia and kisses him before getting to work on the elevator. Anna remembers putting the wrong code three times will crash it, so she starts punching numbers, which proves more difficult than it sounds, because she's been infected too, and her body has started glowing, so she feels weak with pain. The two first tries go slowly but well, but she barely puts half a fake code when the elevator makes it to the surface, so she has to struggle against the grasp of the rescue team to punch the final numbers. The elevator starts the self-destruct sequence and falls down as Anna leaves with the new team in a van. Surrounded by soldiers, she takes the chance to steal a grenade from them and gets off the vehicle as soon as the van leaves the facility. Seeing more scientists are arriving, Anna approaches them and detonates the grenade, matching the beginning of the story. 